Joining me right now, GOP political strategist and co-founder of MustreadTexas.com, Matt Mikoviak. Matt, good morning. How are you? Hey, Chad. Good morning. Doing great. Uh, thanks for uh, coming on today. Uh, let, let's start off talking about Donald Trump. Uh, Trump mania uh, seems to be out there. Uh, j- just about every writer that can is uh, writing about Donald Trump uh, these days. Uh, first, I want to get your thoughts on Donald Trump just as a candidate overall. And then second, is there anything that Republican candidates can learn from Donald Trump, even though they may disagree and find Donald Trump to be a sideshow? Yeah, look, I, I've been pretty down on Trump as a candidate. Um, and honestly, you know, the, the the litany of inconsistencies, flip-flops, and, you know, sort of cheap shots that are in his, his past are just too long to, to, to number. Um, the National Memo had a fascinating list of 21 questions uh, for, for Donald Trump that go into his business practices that they posted the last couple of days uh, that brings up a lot of very serious questions about how Trump operates. Um, but even above that, I mean, you can talk, t- talk to Kevin you know, Williamson at the National Review or Jonah Goldberg at National Review or a number of other people, George Will, Charles Krauthammer. I mean, everyone's made basically the same point, which is that Trump's just not serious. Right. He's not a substitute candidate. There's no, there's no strategy there. He's just winging it. Uh, every single time, and and he he benefits sort of from the perverse incentive of of uh, being advantaged by making irresponsible statements. Now, let me add to that though the fact that he's obviously raised an issue. The sanctuary cities issue has has you know really really popped up because of this murder in San Francisco. If he hadn't been irresponsible in the language he was using. Um, I think we, we we could probably use this moment um, to really push on sanctuary cities, but but instead of focusing on that murder, where everybody's focused on the language Trump is using, and that's why he's been dropped by all these companies, and uh, it's hurting his business. So it's a shame he went too far with the language because the, the the underlying point I think is a reasonable one, which is look, the border is not fully secure, um, and we have sanctuary cities all over the country, and and these preventable crimes are happening everywhere. So. In terms of Trump, look, I mean, he's obviously uh, enjoying a, a you know uh, a period of, of uh, uh, support right now. I think that's mostly because he's a celebrity and he's getting a lot of media attention. We'll see how he does in the first debate. I think that they're likely to give him enough rope to hang himself. In terms of the other candidates, you've seen their response to him, um, you know, sort of run the gamut. You've seen you know George Pataki and Governor Perry, you know, really go after him pretty directly. You've seen Jeb and Rubio kind of express disappointment but not really go after him. You've seen Ted Cruz refuse to criticize Trump. So everybody's sort of responding in their own way. In terms of what they can learn, um, you know, a lot of people talk about, well, Trump understands the base and he's just feeding the base. I'm not necessarily sure that's true. Donald Trump is not a base conservative. Um, you know, he's supported, you know, partial birth abortion as late as 1999. He, you know, he's, he supported amnesty uh, as recently as a few years ago. I mean, you know, he's a major donor to the Clinton Foundation. He wanted Hillary to be Obama's vice president. You can go through his record and, and, and realize that he's been essentially a Democrat until the last few years. Um, so, you know, look, his commitment to the Republican Party is zero. His commitment is to himself. And so I think he's a real danger to the process because he's taking up oxygen from all the other serious candidates and he's saying things that are sometimes irresponsible. Um, that do damage to the brand of the Republican Party. Visiting with Matt McCoviak. Matt, I mentioned earlier on the show that the the fervor I see around Donald Trump, that, that, that you know, some in the, maybe the, the Tea Party conservatives, what whoever they are, that love Donald Trump, it reminds me a lot of the former Chris Christie fans that love the Chris Christie in-your-face style, and they've moved on from Chris Christie. Uh, and now, you know, they used to like Newt Gingrich the same way. Newt Gingrich was one of those mm. guys who was in your face. Is that something, though, that, that a Republican like a, let's say, Scott Walker or a Jeb Bush or or a Rick Perry can learn from and go, okay, if, if maybe I say it in a different way, but I'm bold and I'm out there and I, I don't care about the media spin, maybe they can take that away and people like that part of Trump, Christie, you know, et cetera? Yeah, look, I think that's an interesting point. I mean, I, I do think fortune favors the bold. And in politics, when you're sort of indecisive and timid, uh, generally generally it doesn't benefit you. Um, and look, if we, if we remember from the debates, you know, three years ago on the Republican side, you know, Newt won a lot of those debates because he was making very strong declarative statements. 
not sort of, you know, you know, answering questions in sort of a wimpy, you know, wimpy manner. So, but look, you know, the problem is, is that, you know, generally, um, if you're running for president, you care about your political future, even if you're not going to be the, the nominee. Mm. It's not clear to me that Trump cares at all about his political future. So, so sort of the, the, the typical, you know, sort of, sort of, uh, you know, risk versus reward or, or, you know, you know, kind of evaluation of, 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 you know, how much will something benefit me versus how much, you know, how much risk does it, does it, does it offer, um, doesn't apply to him. You know, he doesn't care about whether the Republican Party, you know, uh, appreciates him or supports him or wants to give him an opportunity to do something in the future. So th- that to me is, is the problem is that, you know, you know, the fact that he won't rule out a third party bid. I mean, everyone else in our field is basically ruled out a third party bid. Why is he the only one who has it? Right. Uh, but, you're, but you're right. In terms of his approach, look, I mean, it, it, in a way, it's refreshing because he does um, say exactly what he thinks, doesn't care what people, what people, how people respond to it. Um, and that is, that, is, that is a very unique approach in politics. It's not always the right approach, and it does get you into trouble. Visiting with Matt Mikoviak. Matt, what, uh, you know, here's what we know about Scott Walker. I think down in Texas, those who maybe don't pay as much attention to politics as we do, uh, they've heard about the you know the, the fight against the unions, the, you know the, the recall elections. What are some other things Scott Walker announcing today that he's running for president? What are some other things that people need to know about the, this new candidate into the race, uh, officially new candidate into the race uh, that maybe they don't know about? Yeah, uh, look, he inherited a mess in Wisconsin. They had a huge budget deficit after years of Democratic rule. Um, turned it around, passed right to work cut taxes, cut spending, has been a very, very strong governor. Um, was re- what, They pushed a recall after he put, passed right to work. Uh, he was the number one target of all the labor unions nationally. They, he had death threats. They had protests, all kinds of just ugliness uh, there in Madison. And, and he won his recall, and then he won his reelection. So he's now won three elections in a purple state in four years. Um, you know, look, he's, he's very much a blue-collar guy. He's a very normal person. Um, he did not graduate college. He went to Marquette for three years and left to start working. Uh, so I think he's one, one year from graduating. Uh, he was county executive in Milwaukee, and then he was elected governor. He was also a state rep before that. So he's been in government uh, most of his, I think, adult life. Um, but he's, he's very blue-collar. He's a very normal guy. Packers you know, fan, shops at Kohl's, dad's a preacher. Uh, he grew up in Iowa for se- several years. Um, and look, I mean, I think he, he does have some, some Reagan in him in the sense that he's very clear on, on moral issues and he's got a very kind of common touch. Um, obviously has very significant executive experience. He's going to have to demonstrate that he understands foreign policy, national security. And I think he's spent a lot of the last few months quietly studying those issues because governors rarely have an opportunity to become, you know, really kind of smart on those things. So, um, but look, I, I think he is a, a very strong general election candidate. The Midwest is a is a part of the country where if we do if we do very well as a party we're, we're likely to win the White House uh, and he's in very good position both nationally and to win Iowa and if he wins Iowa he's going to be one of the final two or three candidates at the end of this yeah absolutely uh, Matt Mikoviak, GOP political strategist co-founder of MustreadTexas.com Matt what can people find on MustreadTexas.com today yeah so like we're we're, we're constantly just uh, tracking. You know, Greg Abbott, uh, <clears throat> Ted Cruz, and Rick Perry, because they're always making news one way or the other. Um, Perry, I believe, is in Iowa today and tomorrow. Uh, uh, I know Cruz, I believe, is chairing a, a Senate subcommittee hearing in D.C. tomorrow. Has had a little bit of a contretemps with the New York Times about his book not being listed as a bestseller, despite it selling more books than all but one, I think. Uh, and uh, Abbott is in New York today and tomorrow trying to bring uh, New York businesses Texas. So we're covering all that and uh, a lot more at MustreeTexas.com. All right. As always, Matt, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you again next week. Take care. Have a good one. It's Matt Mikoviak. You can follow him on Twitter, at Matt Mikoviak. Lots of great uh, news that he sends out via Twitter.